we have a particle moving along the y-axis, they give us the velocity function. They also tell us that time t equals zero, the particle is so much, I'll probably use that when they're asking me for a position of some point. But when you go from the given velocity to acceleration, we know that's the derivative, right? And remember, if you're on the calculator part of the test and you're supposed to take a derivative at a particular time, you don't have to take that derivative by yourself. The calculator will do that for you. Math eight, if you forgot how to do the math eight, rewatch the graphing calculator video I made for you, but the acceleration at two is the same thing as the first derivative of the velocity at two. Math eight, this function, it will take the derivative for you and plug in two, it'll give you that number right there. Part B says, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at time t equals two? We've seen this at least once already, possibly twice, but it's on, on your blue sheet. And we have known that, hey, speed is increasing if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. Speed is decreasing if velocity and acceleration have the opposite signs, either both, either one's, you know, one's positive and one's negative right there. So we already know the acceleration is negative. What I then had to figure out is what's the sign of the velocity. So I took the two, plugged it into the velocity function. It gave me a negative number since they were both the same sign. I put speed as increasing since velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Letter C, it says, find the time at which the particle reaches its highest point. Now just think if you throw a ball up in the air and it comes back down. When it reaches its highest point, the velocity is equal to zero, right? And then when it changes direction, the velocity changes sign. So if you're going up and down this y-axis, if you're going up, your velocity is positive. And if you switch and go back down, then your velocity changes to negative, then you, you switch directions right there, okay? So when you reach the highest point, the first thing you want to jot down hey, where is the velocity equal to zero? And I'm pretty sure when I double checked the rubric there, even if you did nothing else, but just put V equals zero, they awarded a point just for that, right? So you should never leave anything blank on these things. You know how to do certain things there. Even if you're not sure how to do the calculations, you could get at some point just putting down the velocity is equal to zero. All right, so I need to take this velocity function set it equals zero number. Remember, when you're on the calculator part of the test, if you have a difficult equation to solve, you don't have to solve that by yourself. Graph this in the graphing calculator. It will look like this. Calculate the zero of that graph. If you forgot how to calculate a zero, rewatch the graphing calculator video I made for you, and it'll show you how to get this t equals 0.443 number. Also, this is I jot that graph down because notice this is the velocity graph. The velocity graph changes from above to below the x-axis, which means the velocity changed from positive to negative values there. So if your velocity changes from positive to negative, that's what's making that a maximum. And then so there we we got a max height at that number since the velocity changes from positive to negative. So when they say justify your answer on a max or min problem, that's the language that they wanna hear. And this graph there is also supporting that the velocity changes from above to negative. If the graph would have gone from below to above, then the velocity changes from negative to positive, then that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a minimum height right there. So calculate will find that number for you. Make sure we're justifying that properly there. So A through C should be perfect for everybody if we're working hard at these things because we'll keep seeing those concepts over and over again. Letter D, we had to do a little bit of thinking, but it says find the position of the particle at time t equals two. Now, anytime you have to find the position, like if, you, if I say what's your position, if you just tell me you drove 50 miles south I still don't know your position unless you told me where you started. If you tell me you started on, you know, the, the 231 exit to go to, you know, I-65 and you went 50 miles south, then I know where you're at, right? So what I want to mention, here is the all of letter D all in, in one spot here. When you do a position problem, you always got to take into account the initial position where you started. And so it told us, that's why I underlined that at the beginning. At T equals zero, we're starting at the y-axis at y equals negative one. Right, so at t equals zero, your position is already at negative one. And if you wanna figure out where did you go in between zero seconds and two seconds, you integrate that velocity. Remember when you integrate the velocity, it gets you that position, right? So when I integrate between zero and two, all that tells me is how far did I go in those two seconds? But you gotta always take into account your initial position where you started. So I always kind of set it up at the beginning right away. The initial position was negative one. That's where I was at at t equals zero. And then you pick it up where you left off. So from zero to that two, 
when I integrate the velocity, that tell me how far I went in between those two seconds right there. So if you do the math nine between zero and two with this velocity function, and then add in that initial position of negative one, it gets you this negative 1.361 number. And that's the first part of part D. We'll see that more in the future on the free response, the multiple choice. We wanna make sure we always take into account that initial position. So let's make sure we try that on our own and uh, get that the right the next time you see something like that. Now, the last part of that, that was kind of tricky, <clears throat> but we already kind of racked up a bunch of points on this problem there. So hopefully we're feeling pretty good about that. It says, is the particle moving towards the origin or away from the origin at time t equals two? So here you got to reason this out a little bit. They told you when t was equal to zero, when you first started, you're only going up and down the y-axis. They told you you're going to be at y equals negative one. And then you calculated after two seconds, well, now here's my position. So after two seconds, I'm at that y value of negative 1.361. You also calculated and let her be here that your velocity at two was negative. Now you know that when your velocity is negative, that means you're you're going down, right? And so you're decreasing. So so if I'm already starting right here and my velocity is negative, it means I'm going down, that means I'm going away from the origin. If my position would have been up here and my velocity is negative, when I'm going down towards that origin, then I'm getting closer to the origin. So again, since my position is below the x-axis, my position is negative, and my velocity is also negative, which means I'm further going down. I'm going away from that, that origin right there. So I just kind of reason out like this. I think this is probably good enough. And then I just rewrote a little bit more technical, but I just mentioned the velocity is negative. So I'm going down and my position is already below the X axis. So that means I'm moving further away from the origin right there. And then I just stress it technical, like particles moving away from the origin at T equals two, since the position is less than zero and the velocity is less than zero. So they want to hear moving away and the position is negative and the velocity is negative. That's what it kind of tells us that. Kool-Aid, man.